Hey. Hey, is that any good? Hey, is that any good? I'm a bit... What? What? What do you want? Oh, well, I was just wondering if that book's any good. No, I'm I a pretty. you said. What do you want? I don't know what you mean. Well, clearly you want something. People don't just randomly ask strangers if they're like a book fairy. Why not? Because you have no idea what my literary tastes are. Any response that I give is meaningless. If I were to say that this was the greatest book I had ever read, that would mean nothing to you. For all you know, this is the first book I've ever read. The same goes for if I said it was absolute shit. Each response is meaningless, so I ask again, what do you want? Uh, what? Clearly, you're not understanding what I'm trying to say, so why don't you just go ahead. Go ahead and say whatever it is you understand. Well, honestly, I, I didn't r really think about that. I, I just wanted to make small talk. Why? Well, what do you mean, why? Why do you want to make small talk? Do you know me? No, but you were reading and a book, and I like... why do you want to talk to... Can I come sit over there with you? I mean, it's kind of awkward talking like this. Hi, I'm Joe. And what's your name? Jack. Hi, nice to meet you, Jack. So, how's it going? Hey, what are you doing? What do you mean? You're supposed to tell me why you wanted to make small. Oh, right. Yeah, well, I was sitting over there, bored by myself, and, and I saw you sitting here with your coffee and your book, and I mean, you looked like you were having a good time. So I thought to myself, wow, that guy looks like he's having a good time. And I want to have a good time. So I thought, well, maybe it's the coffee that is making you look so content. But then I, I realized that, you know, I had a coffee, and I didn't feel nearly as happy as you looked. So then I thought, well, it must be the book. So, so that's why I asked you about it. Sorry if I bothered you. No, no, I'm sorry for getting mad at you. It's okay. So how is it? What? The book. Oh, um, yeah, it, it's, it's okay. Um, I kind of feel like I know how it's going to end already. It's kind of annoyingly predictable, but I'm already more than halfway through, so I feel like I have to finish it. Why do you feel that? Because I've spent $29.95 on it. If I were to give up now, after spending so much time reading it, I would feel like it was all a waste. Well, what if you get to the end and, and you absolutely hate it? Wouldn't that be more of a waste than if you just pulled the plug now? I guess, but I won't know that until I get to the end. The end could totally save it, and then it would have been worth all the time and money. Yeah, that's true, but it's still a risk. I guess. Yeah, that's why I start books at the end. What? I, I start books at the end. Uh, it's, it's... How does that work? Well, I, I read the entire last page, and then if it feels satisfying enough, I will go back to the start, and I will read it all. Okay, but that, that completely ruins the experience. Not really. Yes, it does. If you know something's going to end, then you can't enjoy anything that comes before it. You're just sitting there the entire time waiting for an ending that you already know is coming. I would, I would... No, I completely disagree. If you know something's going to end, it makes everything up until that point all the more fascinating because you're sitting there, you're constantly wondering, how is it going to get to the end that I already know about? Yeah, but think about all of the wonderful surprises and the, the twists and turns that you're missing out. Mm -hmm. Twists are overrated. No, they are not. If a twist is done properly, it's great. We live for the twist. No, we don't. Yes, we do. Everyone secretly wants to be surprised. They want to be left with their jaw dropped. Mm -hmm. Twists either feel way too predictable, or they're so outlandish that they feel cheap. I mean, even the name Twist proves that. How so? Okay, well, what do you think of when I say the word Twist? Twizzlers. What? You know, candy? You know, I know what they are, but why on earth do you think of that when I say Twist? When I was a kid, I used to take Twizzlers, and I would twist them until they broke. And you didn't do that? Mm, I can't say that I did. But clearly, you're missing out. Okay, forget about the Twizzlers. Um, here, let, let me tell you what I think of when I say that word. When, when I say the word twist, I think of a, a twist tie. Okay. Okay, and, and uh, what do you do with a twist tie? You twist. Exactly. You forcibly twist it around something. Well, that's like the, the twists in, in, a, in a story. I'm not following. Okay, so you take a perfectly good aspect of a narrative, like a twist tie, when it is flat, and then you forcibly twist it around something that you want. Like when you, you twist it, a twist tie over top of a bag to seal it up. Yeah? It, it feels coarse and cheap. And if you were to tug at the loose ends, it, it could easily just fall apart. Like if you really stop and you think about the, the, the twist in stories, you know, they usually all just kind of fall apart. So you don't like twist ties? 
Yes, exactly. How about the twist at the end of the sixth sense? You know, where Bruce Willis could be dead the whole time? I mean, that twist totally makes sense of the story. Well, there is an exception to the rule, then. Uh, okay, but just because there's one exception doesn't mean that you break the entire rule. I mean, Kate, did, did you like the twist at the end of The Happening? No. Did you like the twist at the end of The Village? No. A uh, Lady in the Water? No. The Visit? All right, why are all of your examples in Night Shaw? Have you never seen a Hitchcock film? No, he just proves my point. Um, Just like it, the Tim Burton Planet of the Apes remake. You know, did you like that atrocious twist ending? Nobody liked that atrocious twist ending. No one's forgiven Tim Burton for making Johnny Depp dance in Alice in Wonderland. Okay, forget about that then. All I'm trying to say is that if you know the destination, it makes the journey far more interesting to take. And, and it lets you know if you want to take that journey in the first place. Well, I guess we'll just have to agree to this. Okay. I, I, I will prove it to you. Absolutely. What if I told you that this conversation was going to end up with one of us dead? What? It's just a hypothetical. Just, just, just go with it. Okay. Okay. So you knew for a fact that this conversation was going to end with one of us lying here on this table dead. You're telling me that wouldn't make it more interesting to watch? No, it would make it fucking creepy, and I'd want to leave as soon as possible. Well, yeah, but that's because you don't want to die. Okay, no shit. Yeah, but pretend you were a third party to all of this. What do you mean? Like if you were an impartial viewer, and and uh, by the power of God or or some psychic ability, you knew that one of us was going to have their throat slit by a box cutter and bleed out onto this table and the other one is going to get away completely free. That's bizarrely specific. Yeah, I, I just watched Gone Girl last night and so the whole box cutter thing is in, in the money. Have you seen Gone Girl? No. You should really watch Gone Girl. Okay. Anyhow, you're telling me that that conversation would not be more interesting than watching two guys talk about next to nothing for minutes on end? I guess so. You, you guess so? You keep, okay, so you're telling me that if you knew that I was going to bash your brains in with a meat cleaver right now and steal your wallet and your keys and your identity, eh, that wouldn't make this more interesting to watch? What movie is that from? Nothing. I, I, I just thought of it. Okay. Hey, no, 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 no. Everything's all right. It's all right, okay? Everything's fine. It's all good, okay? Let's use a less graphic example. Uh, how about poison? Poison? Yeah, poison. So, let's say for reasons unknown, I had come into this coffee shop today and sat by you, and then I had to somehow make conversation. Like by asking you how the book is. Yes, and then when I come sit by you, I would have to distract you at some point. Distract you how? I, I don't know, I, I would just have to do it long enough so that I, I could slip some lethal poison in, into your coffee. What? And then all I would have to do is wait for you to take a sip. And then my plan will have worked. Are you saying that you poisoned my coffee? No. No, I'm saying that hypothetically I, I, I could have. No, well, the, the, uh, hypothetically, I don't think you could. Because hypothetically, I've, I've been keeping that coffee in the corner of my eye this entire time. That's why you have not touched it. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Mm. How sure? Very. Sure enough to take a sip? <laughs> Maybe I'm not 100% sure. See? Now doesn't that make the process of drinking your coffee that much more of a thrilling experience? No, it makes it a fucking creepy experience. No, 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 your heart rate is elevated right now. I can tell. You're on alert. Why would you say that? Because you're actually trying to figure out if I did have time to put poison in your okay, coffee. Look. Oh. Oh crap, you know what, I, I gotta go. What, why? I'm supposed to be meeting someone for a movie later, and I need to get to the theater so that I can sneak into an earlier showing and catch the end. Really? Trust me, knowing how something is going to end is the best. It makes everything up until that point more exciting. Just get the hell out of here. Hey, don't be mad. Look, I was only trying to prove my point. Hey, I'm going to leave and you can forget about me in this conversation and you can go back to your coffee and your book and I hope I didn't ruin either of those for you. Okay, good. It was very nice to meet you, Jack. And uh, hey, if I see you again, you'll have to let me know if, if sticking with that book to the end was worth it. See ya. Bye, Joe.